Hey guys, here in this video, we are going to discuss about the muscles of the rotator cuff. So, let's start the discussion. Rotator cuff muscles. So, what is the main function of the rotator cuff muscles in the upper limb? So, remember that the rotator cuff muscles are responsible for stabilization. Stabilization of shoulder joint stabilization of shoulder joint so the stability of the shoulder joint mainly depends upon the patency of these muscles okay now let us discuss about how many muscles are there so for this it is uh, better to remember a mnemonic over here so the mnemonic to remember the rotator cuff muscles is sits s i t s if you notice pretty clearly in the mnemonic, the T is the small alphabet stating that we have two types of muscles. One is teres minor and teres major. So T stands for the smaller case means teres minor. So out of four muscles, one S which stands for supraspinatus, I stands for infraspinatus, T stands for teres minor and S stands for subscapularis. Okay. Let's try to identify these muscles in this image. So the first one is the supraspinatus muscle. So you could see very clearly that the supraspinatus muscle takes its origin at the supraspinous fossa of the scapula, right? We know that this is called as spine of the scapula. Above the spine, the fossa is called as supraspinous fossa. And below the spine, the fossa is called as infraspinous fossa. And the spine is located at the dorsal aspect of the scapula. And at the ventral aspect of the scapula, we stated in the osteology that we have the subscapular fossa. And at the dorsal aspect of the scapula, we have the spinous process which divides the dorsal aspect into two uh, osteological regions. One is the supraspinous fossa and another one is the infraspinous fossa. So now... The first muscle, which is the supraspinatus, takes its origin from the supraspinous fossa of the scapula. Now, let's talk about the second muscle, immediately below the spine. So, obviously, you know the name, which is the infraspinatus muscle, right? Infraspinatus muscle origin, obviously, it is infraspinous fossa of the scapula. Now, the most important one, you could see a small muscle over here. At the lateral aspect of the scapula or you could see the origin which is derived from lateral border of the scapula right this is called as teres minor muscle so the origin of the teres minor is from the lateral border of the scapula which is also called as the axillary border so if you carefully see the direction of its insertion the direction of its insertion all these are attached at one point, at one anatomical location, which is greater tubercle, greater tubercle of the humerus, right? You know the origin and insertion is at the greater tubercle of the humerus. Now, if we discuss about the fourth muscle, which is the subscapularis muscle, Subscapularis muscle takes its origin from the subscapular fossa. So, we could see here, this is called as the subscapular fossa. Guys. This entire area is called as the subscapular fossa. So, this is the fourth muscle, subscapularis muscle. And what about its insertion? You can see the insertion, right? The insertion is at the lesser tubercle of the humerus. So, lesser tubercle right so if you see very clearly if you revise once again supraspinatus infraspinatus teres minor gets inserted at the greater tubercle of the humerus but the subscapularis is inserted at the lesser tubercle of the humerus right now we know the position of these muscles as well as its origin as well as insertion let's concentrate on its nerve supply as well as the actions over here so now what we'll do is, let's write these muscles one by one. The first one is the supra 
spinatus muscle. This is very very important muscle because this is the most common injured muscle in the rotator cuff. Let me write over here itself. Most common injured muscle of the rotator cuff. Right. So supraspinatus. So su supraspinatus is innervated by so nerve supply. Supraspinatus is innervated by. Remember, guys, it is innervated by the suprascapular nerve. Suprascapular nerve right now what about the functions functions so the supraspinatus muscle is responsible for initiation of abduction of the arm so initiation of arm abduction initiation of arm abduction so, initiation of arm abduction means 0 degrees to 15 degrees. So, if we discuss little bit about the off topic over here, abduction of the arm, we can discuss anatomically under three aspects. One is 0 to 15 degrees. Next, we could discuss like uh, 15 degrees to 90 degrees. And next is greater than 90 degrees. We know that that 0 to 15 degrees of the abduction of the arm is mediated by the supraspinatus muscle, which is innervated by the suprascapular nerve. And 15 to 90 degrees of abduction, 15 to 90 degrees of abduction is done by deltoid. Is done by deltoid. Remember, deltoid is innervated by axillary nerve. Now, greater than 90 degrees of abduction. Remember, greater than 90 degrees of abduction is also known as overhead abduction. So, overhead abduction of the arm is done by, mainly done by the serratus anterior muscle along with trapezius. So, serratus, serratus anterior and trapezius. So, with the help of trapezius we can say, but the chief one is the serratus anterior. Remember, the serratus anterior is innervated by long thoracic nerve right that's the reason we say that uh, injury to the long thoracic nerve is responsible for winging of scapula right yeah so this is about the abduction of the arm so i hope you know a few very important points about the supraspinatus it is the most common injured muscle of the rotator cuff nerve supply is by the suprascapular nerve and the function is the initial abduction of the arm that is initiation of the abduction of the arm that is from 0 to 15 degrees. Now, let's move on to the second muscle of the rotator cuff. Second one. What is the second one, guys? Infra spinatus. The second one is called as infra spinatus. We know about the origin as well as insertion. Let's directly dive into the innervation. So, even this one is innervated by the suprascapular nerve supra scapular nerve even this one is innervated by supra scapular nerve so what about the function what about the function infraspinatus so we know that the supraspinatus is responsible for mainly for the initial abduction of the arm but the infraspinatus is responsible for external rotation external rotation external rotation of the arm mainly responsible for external rotation of the arm remember this point right and the nerve supply is by the suprascapular nerve coming towards the third one of the rotator cuff which is called as teres minor muscle right the third one is the teres minor muscle so, what about the nerve supply of this muscle? Nerve supply of the teres minor. It is by the axillary nerve. Axillary nerve. Remember guys very clearly that the axillary nerve gives innervation to the deltoid as well as teres minor. Right? Now, so, so what is the function of deltoid? 
we know that deltoid is responsible for abduction. So what is the function of teres minor? Because you may think that axillary nerve is supplying both the muscles. One is deltoid, one is teres minor. So deltoid is responsible for the abduction. So automatically you will think that teres minor is also responsible for the abduction. Just because nerve supply is same, you cannot think that the uh, action of the muscle is also same. It is exactly opposite to that of deltoid. So teres minor function. Remember guys, teres minor function is adduction. Okay, teres minor function is adduction. Adduction of arm. So not only the adduction, it is also responsible for external rotation. So external rotation. It is responsible for external rotation, right? So this is the function of the teres minor. Now, the fourth one, which is the bulkiest of uh, the rotator cuff, we know that which is present at the ventral aspect of the scapula, which is subscapularis muscle. Subscapularis. What is the nerve supply of the subscapularis? Nerve supply of the subscapularis, upper and lower subscapular nerves. So, upper and lower subscapular nerves. Upper and lower subscapular nerves. Now, what is the function of uh, the subscapularis muscle? The functions of these muscles, guys, remember, it's very, 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 very important. So, let me write uh, the function. The function of subscapularis muscle is responsible for adduction, adduction of the arm, internal rotation, internal rotation. So remember point very clearly that um, you can see a teres minor is responsible for external rotation and you can see the infraspinatus is responsible for external rotation. So the only muscle which is responsible for the internal rotation of the arm in the rotator cuff muscle, which is the subscapularis, right? This is responsible for the internal rotation, right? So these are the four muscles of the rotator cuff. And I want to tell you a few important as well as interesting point uh, regarding the subscapularis muscle. Because the subscapularis muscle is often considered as forgotten muscle of the rotator cuff. Remember this point, it is very, very important for the MCQ, forgotten, forgotten muscle, forgotten muscle of the rotator cuff. So what is the reason it is considered as the forgotten muscle of the rotator cuff? So let's go back to the image over here once again. If you see the placement of these muscles, so uh, tell me one very important thing that the dorsal aspect of the scapula can be accessed very easily or the ventral aspect. The ventral aspect of the scapula is facing towards the chest wall. So because it is facing towards the chest wall, you cannot access the ventral aspect of the scapula and the muscles which are present at that location. So the ventral aspect of the scapula has the subscapular fossa where it gives origin to the subscapularis muscle. You cannot access it. But if you see three muscles which are present at the dorsal aspect of the scapula, one is supraspinatus, infraspinatus and teres minor can be easily accessed, right? So that's the reason the anatomy as well as position where the subscapularis muscle is located on the ventral aspect of the scapula, which cannot easily visible or palpable when compared to that of the other rotator cuff muscles right therefore it is less accessible for the examination as well as assessment that is the reason it is often considered as the forgotten puzzle not only that when you compare with the injuries of the rotator cuff muscles the subscapularis muscle gets least injured out of all the four most common will be supraspinatus least common will be subscapularis so because of these reasons the subscapularis muscle is often called as the forgotten muscle of the rotator cuff. So I hope you have understood the muscles of the rotator cuff along with its origin insertion of supply as well as action in detail. Okay. In next video, we will discuss about uh, the rotator cuff tear.